Hello, and welcome to the FA 4870 and 4860 Serger video. We are going to show you the basics of user-friendly FA 4870 and 60 Sergers, as well as clever tips and keys to smooth your surging. We will include some optional presser feet too. We will be sewing projects to show you the actual in-use performance. If you have not yet had the opportunity to meet Philip Pepper, Fafso Sewing Creative Sewing Specialist, here he is in person. It is my pleasure to have the opportunity to teach the Fafso Sergers with you, Eileen. I'm sure many of you are already aware of what a talented lady she is. So, let's begin with the technical part. Knowing the correct function and placements of the different parts and mechanics makes surging simple, fast, and a pleasure. The power cable plugs into the socket of the serger and to the wall outlet. Connect the plug of the foot control with the connection socket of the serger. The sewing speed is regulated by pressing the pedal. Each time you turn it on, it sets the speed at 1000 RPM. I'll be explaining the other choices later. When the main switch is turned on, the light comes on. The serger is now operational. To choose one of the 12 additional languages other than English, which comes on automatically, keep both the program key and speed pre-selection key pressed, and at the same time, switch the serger on. Chesky now appears in the display. You can select the language you want by repeatedly pressing the program key. The free arm is particularly suited to sew tubular goods without any difficulty. To do so, pull the detachable work support to the left. You can see the clip at the front, so if you pull slightly to the front first, it comes off easily. Insert the tabs of the waste box into the notches on the looper cover and press it down against the looper cover until you hear it catch. Reverse to remove. Empty the contents before it overflows so that scraps do not get sewn into your work. The accessory box is so handy, built into the side of the machine. Grasp here and pull straight out. When it's new, it's very tight, but you wouldn't want the contents to come out as you're surging along. To open, press both sides and lift the lid with Foff Hobby Lock right side up. Push into the opening until it catches. And this is what comes in your accessory box. Screwdriver, the small screwdriver for changing needles, lint brush. Keeping your serger clean is very important. We will show you more. Tweezers for getting into small places. An extra upper blade. Be careful not to cut pins and your blades will last a long time five or four unreeling discs for your thread spools. Needles are the FOF system EL705 in sizes 8012 and 9014. If you use all-purpose system 705 needles, you will need to increase the needle tensions. Sewing machine oil. Please use only one drop at a time after cleaning. Rolled hem needle plate R, one of my personal favorites. Thread spool nets, either four or five. Isn't this an interesting looking tool? It's for changing the light bulb. Needle threader. Needle changing aid, which holds the needle for you. I have searched some color-coded samples to help clarify some of our serger terminology. Let's take a close-up look at the needles. On the 4870 or 5 thread serger, you have the possibility of using three different needle positions with a maximum of two needles at a time. The needle A will give you the chain stitch. The B needle is the widest overlock width. The C needle is used for the narrowest overlock or in combination with the B needle, it becomes the safety stitch. The 4 thread serger FAF Hobby Lock 4860 has two needle positions. A and B. Use your A needle for the widest overlock and your B position for the narrowest overlock. The B position becomes the safety stitch when used together with the A needle. 
To change the needles, use the small handled screwdriver from the accessory kit. Each screw is lettered with A, B, or C on our 4870 and A and B on our 4860. The screws are placed in such a way that they are actually at an angle to the needle to hold them in the strongest, most secure way, in a very tiny space. To remove any needle, first, turn off the power to the machine. Save your fingers. Make more workspace by lowering the foot and turn the hand wheel so the needle is in its highest position. Place the needle changing aid onto the needle. Turn the set screw counterclockwise or to the left about two complete turns or just until you get the needle out. Never remove the screw. Do not tighten the screw. Leave it at the point where you remove the needle because over tightening can be damaging to the screw. If you surge without one of the needles, as for the rolled hemming, the screw will not fall out as it is designed to be left loose when not in use. With the power still off, the chain needle A holder is toward the front and on the left side. When you look at the markings for the set screws just above the needles, the chain needle lines up between the right side of the A screw head and the line to the B screw. The B and C needle holders are at the back of the needle bar together. The B needle lines up slightly to the right of the B arrow. The C needle is slightly to the left of the C arrow. I will tilt the machine up so you can see under there, but it isn't necessary now that you know what to look for from the front. With the 4-thread Pfaff Hobby Lock 4860, the A needle lines up to the right of the A arrow. While the B needle is to the left of the B arrow. They are both at the back of the holder. I just love it. Do you see that it comes already threaded? and color coded. The easiest way to thread your new colors is just to tie on and pull through. The needle threads are tied with square knots. The loopers use overhand knots. The square knot is formed by laying the threads right over left and then left over right. My cords are too big for actually going through the eyes of the needles, but your serger thread will pop right through when you give a gentle tug on the threads by pulling from underneath the presser foot. The overhand knot for our loopers is formed by placing both thread ends together, making a circle and pulling the ends through. Be certain to pull your knots tight and smooth before pulling. Set the tensions at minus five and the knots will slide right through. Here we have some hints for becoming accustomed to running a serger. Before starting a simple project, serge off the edges of old towels which have lost their salvage edges. Give washcloths a new edge on life. Trim off the edges of the top sheets, which are too wide and hang out from underneath the quilt or comforter-type bedspread. What a treat to not have to tuck them in each morning. Search the cut edge of your next garment before constructing it, just like they do in the garment industry. Ready-to-wear calls this technique frame it. Be certain to skip any seams, which will be enclosed seams, as they will be trimmed off later and would only waste your time and thread. Speaking of thread, Let's take a moment to make some very important points about what the thread market has to offer you. Thread choices are going to make or break your surging. Sorry about the pun, Eileen. What can we say, but cheap thread is no bargain. Just look at the fuzz, thick and thin places on this thread. Quality thread, like this, gives you the assurance that it won't be breaking in the middle of your project. Spools of thread can be used also but must be tested for the correct direction to place it on the spindle so that it doesn't become twisted. Philip, show them your great 24-inch magic trick. 
It really is amazing that it can make such a big difference which end of the spool is up or down when threading. First, hold the spool horizontally. Pull the end of the thread off with your right hand to the right 24 inches. Next, bring the end of the thread back to the spool and allow it to hang next to the thread where it is coming off the spool. Wow, look at that twist. That direction would cause big trouble in serging or sewing. Now let's see the good way. Without turning the spool, with your left hand, grasp the thread up next to the spool and pull off 24 inches to the left. Bring it back to the spool and there you have the correct non-twisting direction. Now you have tested and this is the end which should be up so that the thread does not twist as you serge. That's right. Another thing which I did in the 24 inch magic trick was not to use the same portion of thread I previously tested, but new thread just as it had been wound on the spool. Of course you can sew with the used or tested portion of the thread, but you can't test a rewrap thread or unwound thread because the twist has been released and changed. The thread spool net from the accessories is particularly useful as it prevents synthetic threads from unraveling so easily and slipping off the spool. Remember to pull the spool stand out and the telescopic guide up. The thread unreeling disc from the accessories is used for smaller thread spools. Remove the centering pieces from the thread reel pin and put on the thread, placing the unreeling disc on the top of the spool with the rounded end to the bottom. The reel disc D is helpful when using large thread spools, five to 10,000 meters. Place the thread spool centering piece upside down on the reel pin as I have illustrated. The reel disc prevents the loops of synthetic threads from slipping down and ensures that the thread runs smoothly. If you were in a hurry and did not do the magic trick, you will see the horrible twist of thread happening as it is coming up the thread mast. Not to worry, just be sure to look, turn the spool of thread over, replacing the unreeling disc, and it will untwist itself as you surge and you can continue on your merry way. I wish I could tell you the secret formula of which end is always going to be, but there is no normal. Different manufacturers change the spool and can be wound with the same ends turned opposite. We have many beautiful and interesting types of thread here. Yes, and we'll be using many of them as we go. Place thread spools on the spool pins. The correct threading sequence is right over edge looper pink, left over edge looper yellow, chain stitch looper mauve triangle, right needle green, left needle blue. The slider on the converter must be in the right hand position. Use your built in thread chart to guide you. To achieve top sewing results, make sure that the thread is under the back guide and is pulled between the tension discs when threading. Thread the right over edge looper. The thread path is marked in pink. Draw the thread to the left under the sewing foot. Threading the left over edge looper. The threading path is marked in yellow. The marking on the hand wheel must be in line with the marking on the housing. Thread the left over edge looper in order. Pull the thread from the thread guide through the looper eye and pull it a bit with your left hand. Pull the end of the thread slightly and push the slider on the looper threader at the same time let the slider slowly slide back. The thread is automatically inserted in the guide. With the tweezers, thread the guide and draw the thread 
to the left under the sewing foot. If the slider on the threader cannot be moved, the marking on the hand wheel is not correctly set. Thread the chain stitch looper in order. The threading path is marked in mauve. Turn the hand wheel counterclockwise so that the chain stitch looper is in the farthest position to the right. Push the positioning lever of the chain stitch looper down. This moves the looper to the next position to the right and you can thread it easily. Now pull the thread through the looper eye and place it to the left under the sewing foot. Return the positioning lever of the chain stitch looper to its original position. If you forget to return the positioning lever to its original position, the 4870 does not sew a chain stitch. Thread the over edge needle in order. The threading path is marked in green. Place the threader from the accessories with the needle between the two guide lugs. Slowly lower the threader behind the needle until the small hook passes through the needle's eye. Draw the thread from the bottom through the hook and the thread automatically passes through the needle's eye. You can now pull the end of the thread through the eye to thread the needle. Thread the chain stitch needle in order. The threading path is marked in blue. Draw the thread through the needle's eye with the threader. Draw the thread to the left over the sewing foot. Raise the presser foot and draw the B or C needle thread under the presser foot and to the left. You can only sew with one or two needles depending on the type of stitch. Remember to thread the easy way. Cut the threads off close to the thread spool and put on the new spools. Tie the ends of the old thread and the new thread together with the square knot for the needles and the overhead knots for the loopers. Now pull the threads through one at a time as that gives you the most reliable results. It is a lot easier to pull the looper threads if you turn to looper tensions 4, 5, and 6, 2, minus 5. Be certain to remember to reset them for either in for normal or use the built-in computer settings. Let's take a minute to see these things called loopers and see exactly what they are doing and how it happens. I've used our tie-on and pull-through threading to color code. The pink threading path goes to the upper or right looper which is laying its thread from the right on top of the fabric, while the yellow threading path goes through the left or lower looper. It is placing the thread on the underside of the fabric. Can you see it swing in from the left? The upper looper picks up the yellow thread on its arm, while both loopers swing into their respective positions for the needle to pierce through the fabric and secure the looper threads to the fabric. 
The interlacing of the upper and lower loopers on the edge of the fabric has been compared to knitting or crocheting the edge. Isn't this a great concept? No bobbins to fill. The larger the cone of thread, the farther you can surge. When the machine has been threaded, you must close the looper cover. The power to the machine is cut off if the looper cover is open, meaning it is now impossible to sew. Please close looper cover appears in the display. The LEDs on the speed selection also flash. You should sew a test seam. First raise the sewing foot. Place a fabric remnant under the sewing foot right in front of the blade and lower the foot. With the threads held slightly taut, slowly begin. Since the fabric is automatically fed, you just need to guide the material with your hands. Do not push or pull. Make sure that the threads inner loop correctly when sewing. Your manual has excellent diagrams of how to set balances, which are especially useful when you are experimenting with decorative threads. On both machines, you can set the maximum speed in three steps with this key. By pressing the speed key, you change the maximum speed in one, two, or three LEDs light up. One LED equals zero to max 500 RPM. The revolutions per minute translate directly to stitches per minute. Two LEDs equal zero to max 1000 RPM. Each time the machine is switched on, it automatically sets a speed of 1000 RPM. Three LEDs equal zero to max 1500 RPM. This is wonderful speed and so very controllable with the electronic foot control. The LEDs on the needle display show which of the needles, A, B, or C, have to be inserted for the program you have selected. Select the desired program by pressing the left program key. The programs appear in the order 1 to 21. Keep the key pressed and the programs automatically run on. If the mod key is pressed, the standard characteristics of the stitch are displayed. Set the machine as indicated in the display. Symbols above the display. Program, program number, stitch length, seam width, differential feed, sewing pressure, needle plate. All the symbols under the display refer to the thread tensions. They are from the left to the right. Left over edge needle or chain stitch needle is blue. Left or right over edge needle, green. Right over edge looper is pink. Left over edge looper, yellow. Chain stitch looper is mauve. And of course, the 4860 does not have the chain stitch looper. The optimal values are entered as standard settings for each program. You can change all the data from the standard setting in any program and store them. There are three memories, A, B and C, available for each program which appear right behind the program number. Proceed as follows. Select the desired program with the program key. The standard setting appears in the display when the mod key is pressed. If the mod key is pressed again, the letter A appears beside the program number as an indication that you can now enter your own values in memory A. If the mod key is pressed again, memory B appears, and if pressed once more, memory C. If the cursor is pressed, the display for the stitch length appears. You can now alter the stitch length with the program key. If you wish to alter other settings, press the cursor key until the setting that is to be changed flashes. You can now set them as required. Press the mod key to enter the data in memory. Press the mod key until you come back to the previously selected memory, A, B, or C. All the new data has now been entered and is retained when the machine is switched off. If you select your memory again, the values that have been entered now flash. They can, of course, be changed at any time as described.
Now that you know the programming and threading, let's get started with the basics of serging. First, we will finish some edges of our serger cover. We will choose program number four, which is our three thread overlock narrow. You can see we have everything set on end as is recommended by our display. Can you also see that the feed dogs extend in front of the end normal presser foot? For your convenience, you do not need to lift the foot. Place the fabric in front of the foot and serge those edges. Working with a standard 5 8 seam allowance pattern, the fabric edge runs at the guide. The side of the end throat plate is on the same 5 8 line. Now let's make it interesting by turning corners. Outside corners, you stop one stitch past the corner. Raise the needle up, clear the stitch finger by raising the foot, and pulling a little bit to the back. Just enough to have the stitches slide off the stitch finger, pivot the fabric, line up the cut edge with the knife, and the surged edge with the needle tip. Lower the presser foot and continue sewing the remaining corners in the same manner. Even more interesting are the inside corners. You will need this for attached pockets, etc. If you are working with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, pre-trim down your finished size. The serger settings will remain the same. Align the fabric edge with the blade and trim only the fuzzies. When the knife blade is about a quarter of an inch from the corner, Swing the fabric in front of the blade to create a straight line, while tucks will form to the left of the foot. Continue surging straight. Talk about a magic trick. Isn't it amazing that those tucks don't get sewn down? If you want, you can put a drop of seam sealant on the inside corner, Dry it and clip the edge just a scant one quarter inch before surging the inside edge. Circles and curves are surged with a different technique than your traditional sewing machine. With our window treatment, the shade edges were finished with a regular serger thread and a three thread overlock number five program on both sergers. Our curved scallops are the same program, but we used a decorative thread in a pink or upper looper. The decorative scroll is another technique. To make our curves, place the cut edge next to the blade. As you surge, swing the curved edge even with the blade in front. It will cup up the fabric, but resist the urge to flatten it. If flat, the surging will be off the edge. Using the same decorative thread and a fusible thread on the lower looper, the decorative scroll was created for the band. Surge over nylon trico cut bias or over two layers of netting. Surge as many yards as you need plus extra for a test design. And you'll want to trim this evenly. Lay out your design on freezer paper as we have here with the plastic side up. Use a press cloth and fuse onto the freezer paper. It will peel off the paper and then use fabric glue to attach it to the shade band. That is a great technique. You can use it with clothing and washable items too. Sometimes you will want to top stitch it in place with a twin needle on your sewing machine. Foff Club Magazine number 10 features this very creative red linen dress on the front cover. Being creative is fun and easy. 
Now let's put the ends of our serger cover which will combine both straight lines with curves. I'll demonstrate this on a small sample. We already mentioned that pins should never be sewn over by the blade. And no one ever did it on purpose. The tip here is a special tape. It doesn't gum up the needle and it is double faced and will dissolve in the wash. Place the tape on the flat section of your project and remove the paper. Carefully position one section at a time and serge with the curved side up. Another great home decorating idea is the very expensive designer wire edge ribbons. To make these, we will change the needle plate from N to R for rolled hems. First switch off the main switch. Please note, to change the needle plate, you must set the needle width adjusting knob to 3 millimeters. Press to the right and release. You can set the seam width you require as indicated in the window. The range is from 3 to 5 millimeters and is completely changeable within those limits. The standard setting N is 3.5 millimeters. The seam width settings 3 to 5 are just for the C needle of the 4870. If needle B is used, the width set is increased by 2.2 millimeters to 5.2 to 7.2 millimeters. For needle A, the chain needle, the amount set is increased by 4 millimeters to 7 to 9 millimeters seam width. For your specific project, I recommend you double check the width settings in your instruction manual. When you have set the seam width you require, press the knob to the right until it catches in place. This prevents the seam width being accidentally changed while sewing. Raise the sewing foot with the lever and set the needle in its highest position. Remove the sewing foot and press down on the lever to disengage the needle plate. Raise the needle plate up, then a little to the front to clear thread from the stitch finger and remove to the left. To attach a new plate, Raise the spring on the sewing foot holder a little and place the needle plate in the guide screw at the back. Press the needle plate down at the front so that you can hear it catch. Attach the foot and close the cover. You are now ready for beautiful rolled hems like these. If you connect the converter, you can dispense with one thread. You just continue to sew with two threads and can save a lot of thread. Whenever a two thread seam is enough, as for elastic materials and materials that hardly fray, you can still make neat edges with less thread. You can also make very effective fancy seams and rolled edges. To switch on the converter, turn the hand wheel until the right over edge or upper looper is situated to the right of the needle. Cut off the right looper thread and pull it out of the looper eye. The left hand thread that runs over the right looper must be pulled over the point of the right looper or upper looper and off to the left. Push the slide of the converter to the left until the triangles are in line. The point of the slide catches into the eye of the looper. Next we want to show you the hemming technique used for a decorative touch on the side drapes. It is a three thread narrow flat lock used with the latter side out and B needle. Both the 4870 and 4860 have the settings built into the memories. The 4870 is program 16 and the 4860 is program 7. We used matching thread because we wanted it to be subtle and not detract from the shade. 
you will notice that all the settings are on N for normal except for the tensions. This will allow our stitches to slide open when we finish by pressing. To make certain that the flat lock is perfectly even, this is where you will want to use a specialty foot, the blind hem foot. Set the guide about three credit card widths open. To change the sewing foot, switch off the main switch. Raise the sewing foot with the sewing foot lever and set the needle in its highest position. Press the white lever on the back part of the sewing foot holder. The sewing foot is automatically released from its mount and you can remove it to the left, raising the spring slightly. To attach the new foot, raise the spring slightly and place the sewing foot beneath the holder so that when the sewing foot lever is lowered, the pin in the foot catches in place in the sewing foot holder. Check by raising the sewing foot lever to see that the foot is properly secured. Run your cut edge and fold along the guide. Press open and it will open perfectly flat. This special gathering foot is for sewing two fabrics together and gathering the bottom fabric in one operation. Select program 7 on the 4870 or 10 on the 4860 Foff Hobby Lock. This gives us the four thread normal surged finish. Engage the gathering foot by compressing the spring. Clip it in place. You can set your desired length by turning the stitch length adjusting knob. The setting is displayed in the window. The range is from 1 to 4 millimeters and is completely adjustable. The end setting is actually 3 millimeters. The differential feed consists of two different feed dogs, one behind the other. It can prevent the displacement of the fabric layers or can gather as we are setting it here on number two. To insert the fabrics, raise the sewing foot and set the needle in its highest position. Insert the bottom layer of fabric, which is the one you want to gather, between the needle plate and the gathering foot, up to the upper knife. Place the upper layer of fabric even with the lower one, normally right sides together. Always sew a test seam to decide the desired gathering effect with the differential feed. There are excellent photographs of the different ways you can set the differential feed and the effects which result in your instruction manual. Isn't this an incredible foot? Gathering has never been easier. This special sewing foot is for sewing on tapes to prevent stretch materials like knits and lycra from stretching. Shoulder seams are excellent examples of where you would use this technique. We will use program four with our narrow tape which is the three thread overlock narrow on both hobby lock models. The sewing foot pressure is set here. Use position one for sewing very thin fabrics. Of course, in is normal or medium thickness fabric. Position three is for very thick fabrics and that's what we're working with now. The upper knife can be either on or switched off. It is only necessary if you do not wish to cut the fabric. To disengage the upper knife, you must set the seam with adjusting knob to three millimeters. Lower the knife to the lowest position with the hand wheel. Now turn the knob to disengage the upper knife fully to the left and the triangle points to the zero. The knife is now disengaged. To insert the tape into the foot, Set the needle at its highest point and raise the sewing foot. Place your tape into the guide from the right. Push the tape to the right stop with the slide. 
Depending on the width of the tape, adjust its position in relation to the needle with the adjusting screw. Insert your fabric and sew a test seam. It will always save you time. Another variation of this easy to use guide foot is to finish edges with decorative tapes and narrow ribbons. We have so many wonderful and easy techniques with our optional presser feet. Do you see this little hole? You can use this foot to guide cords and threads as well as wire and fishing line to produce undulating or stiffer hems for everything from wedding and evening gowns to home decor. Its big title is Gimp Thread Sewing Foot. This special sewing foot is for sewing on elastic tape in one operation, at the same time as trimming, surging, and due to the contraction of the elastic tape, gathering. Use this for making slip covers, like an ironing board cover, or fitted crib sheets, or any size sheet for that matter. Dust ruffles have never been easier or more professional than with the elastic tape sewing foot. The cording foot is what we use to put the piping into the swag of our window treatment as well as the piping around the edges of our serger jacket. The channel underneath the foot holds the cord to make piping as well as holding your piping in place as you sew. Another tip I would like to mention, this is the foot I love to use when inserting a zipper with my serger. Just align your zipper so that the zipper teeth ride in the groove underneath the foot. Now doesn't that make your job easy? Decorating and sewing on beads, sequins, and even ordinary cords can really add a dash of spice very easily with this bead sewing foot to guide them. Here is our holiday doorknob jingle. Isn't it cute and festive with the fancy threads and beaded edging? Of course, you can do garments and home decorating with it too. This special lace sewing foot is used for sewing lace or borders together or onto another piece. The very special feature of this foot is its movable guide, which you can set as you need to guide an exact edge. In other words, the blade can't cut into your lace and you can set the guide to have the needles piercing the lace edge where you want it. You will find it is great to use for serger pin tucks. It aligns the fabric exactly. Your FOF dealer will gladly demonstrate these accessory feet for you. For your convenience, the directions for all the accessory feet and their use are in the back of your instruction manual. This decorative chain stitch is made with pearl crown rayon in the chain looper. The technique is exclusive to our FAF 5 thread serger. To sew in the middle of the fabric, we first need to turn off the upper right over edge looper. Turn off the upper knife and remove the knife guard. Pull to the left to unclip it. To insert the material guide plate, Slide the flat piece in from the front until it clips onto the throat plate release knob and close the cover. Choose program number eight. Use only the A needle and the only looper is the chain looper where we have pulled our decorative thread through with the famous overhand knot. If your fabric is light to medium weight, it will need to be stiffened with a fabric spray stabilizer. Please see your authorized FAF dealer for many other options for stabilization. Sew with the right side down for this wonderful texturized chain stitch. Wow. 
The chain can be used to construct entire garments in regular thread also. Having the chain stitch makes this Foff Serger 4870 the most versatile serger ever. After the chain stitch seam has been sewn, return the machine to its original condition. First, open the looper cover and remove the material guide plate. Set the needle in the lowest position. Then, turn the looper knob fully to the right. The right or upper looper is re-engaged. The width knob to three millimeters. Re-engage the upper knife by turning the knob fully to the right. Push the knife guard back into the low looper cover. You have it the correct direction when 5 8 marking is right side up. And then close the looper cover. Finish by attaching the waste box. Surging threads and fabric always create lint, don't they? The technicians recommend that you clean your serger either daily or after each project. It will protect your investment and give you many hours of productive surging. To clean the needle plate, disengage the upper knife. Set the largest stitch width. Clean this area carefully using the brush from the accessories or a vacuum attachment for cleaning sewing equipment. To oil the machine, use one drop of oil here and one drop of oil here. All the other parts are made of a special material and do not need to be oiled. Now let's use that interesting tool to change the light bulb. And I'll bet you already know the first step. That's right. Turn the power off. With the tool, press the light bulb up into its socket. At the same time, twist the bulb with a half turn anti-clockwise and remove it. With the power still off, insert a new light bulb into the socket with a special tool. Twist it until the pins in the bulb catch into the slots. Now press the bulb upward into the socket, twisting it clockwise until it is securely fixed. This is a maximum 5 watt power bayonet bulb. There is always the question, how do you know when to change the blades? Well, under normal conditions, excluding pin cutting accidents, your first signal will probably be, as you are surging, the little pieces which are being trimmed off swing back up and get caught under the finished edge and you know you have emptied the waste box. Actually, the reason they are swinging back up is because all the fibers were not cut so it couldn't drop freely. Turn your power off. With the large screwdriver, take out the upper knife retaining screw. It will be very tight. Insert the new upper knife and loosely tighten the retaining screw. Turn the hand wheel until the upper knife is in its lowest position. In this position, the front edge of the upper knife must be 0.5 to 1 millimeter lower than the cutting edge of the lower knife. Do you see how it is to line up with the lower blade? Now you can tighten up its retaining screw. The Foff sergers will sew any type of fabric. For extremely thick fabrics, you must tighten the axial lock screw on the upper knife to prevent the knife from being moved by the thick material. 
Remove the sewing foot and needle plate as we have already done here. Use your large screwdriver from your accessories. Right is tight for heavy fabrics, make it good and tight. To sew lightweight fabrics, the screw must be loosened about two turns from the way we tighten for heavy fabrics. This must also be done to change the cutting width. Then clip the needle plate into place. Position the back of the plate first. Then click the front down firmly. It has been a pleasure to show you the Fop Hobby Lock Surgery 4870 and 4860. If you have any further questions, just ask your FOF dealer. They will be happy to be of service with any help or advice. We wish you many enjoyable hours creating your own fashion ideas. <laughs>